Hey guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our garden gnome. Now before we start, let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. By the way, I'm going to put this painting aside and you can always refer to this image on your screen. Every now and then I'm going to be showing it to you um, for teaching purposes, but yeah, overall just refer to this image on your screen. So what are we going to need for today is, first thing we're going to need is a canvas. I'm going to be using pretty small canvas as you can see in comparison to my hand. This is 8 by 10 inch, but you guys are welcome to use absolutely any size. It doesn't have to be this particular size. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, any size you want to do, you can do that. Now, we're going to start with a sketch. As you can see, my canvas is blank. So for those who will be sketching with me, you're going to need a pencil and an eraser. Now, we did give you guys... Um, pre-sketch image that you can use to pre-sketch your canvas in advance. So for those of you guys who already pre-sketched your canvas, that's okay. You can just relax for the first maybe 15 minutes of the tutorial um, and then join whenever we move on to the painting part. And for those of you guys who haven't sketched, you're going to be sketching along with me with a pencil and an eraser. And maybe if you do not know about a printout and you're like, yes, I would like that, but I'm not ready to do it today, that's okay, that's no problem. You can find a link to this downloadable printout in the description of this video. So just go under the description, you will see it's a Dropbox link. It will bring you right here, so feel free to download it and print it and transfer it onto your canvas. And this video is going to be available um, from now on on our YouTube. We're not going to remove this link, it's going to stay here pretty much forever. So just come back anytime, whenever you're ready to start painting, and it's going to be here for you. And guys, because this is a video recording, you're welcome to pause it, maybe not during premiere, but after the, it premiered, you're welcome to pause it at any time and give yourself enough time um, for every particular step. You don't have to keep up with my speed. I know everyone works at their own pace. So go at your pace, pause it when needed, rewind if needed, um, and you know, don't rush through this. So yes, again, this is in description if you need it and I'll show you how to sketch it from scratch as well. What else are we gonna need? We're gonna need paint. I'm gonna be using student grade acrylic paint and the colors that I'm gonna be using is white, yellow, red, blue, and black. Now, there are two colors that are pretty particular that we have to use. We have to use phthalo or primary blue and we have to have red that has a magenta undertone. So do you see on the pinker side? It shouldn't be like an orangey red, it should be more of a pinker red. And the reason why is I'm going to be mixing it into this pink that you see on our gnome. So if your um, paint has more of an orange undertone, you're just not going to get that pink. But it's still fine too, you're just going to have different color for your flowers and that's okay. You're welcome to modify every single thing on this painting. If you want to change the color of the hat, you can change that. If you want to change the color of your flowers, you can change that. You want to change the color of your background, you can change that, the color of your butterfly. Literally, aim every single thing here is customizable. So, and if you guys are, if you guys would prefer to use, let's say, pre-mixed colors versus primary, you're welcome to use that as well. So for pre-mixed colors, just look at this paint and decide what colors you want to use for the background, for the hat, for the flowers, and grab those colors pre-mixed. So for example, in my case, you can use if you're sticking with the same colors that I have, you can use premixed pink, you can use premixed medium blue, you can use premixed green. I'll be mixing all those colors, but you're welcome to use them premixed if you would like. And what else am I going to need? I'm going to need brushes, of course. I'm going to be using three different brushes today. Two of them are going to be square, and one is going to be pointy. So pointy brush is going to be number zero. Ideally, if you don't have number zero, number one, or number two will work. Just something really, really small with a pointy tip. That's what you're gonna need. We have lots of fine details, so this brush is important in this case. Then I'm gonna use two square brushes. One is medium, one is medium small. For my medium brush, this is number 10 for those who are wondering, and this is number six for those who are wondering. So that's what I'm gonna do. And of course, we're gonna need water, and we're gonna need a paper towel. So I have my water here. And I have my paper towel here. You're welcome to use a reusable fabric cloth as well if you prefer that. All right, so I'm going to put all my um, paint aside and I'm going to start with the sketch. 
So let's start sketching here. What I'm going to start sketching with is a nose. I'm actually going to position my nose first. So it's going to go, I would say, at about one third from the bottom. So identify where it's about one third from the bottom and put an oval there. That's a nose. Could it be a little bigger, could it be a little smaller. After that, I'm going to make a moustache. So I'm going to start by adding a line. So from about middle, you see not from the bottom, not from the top, from around middle. Here I'm going to add a line up and down and curve. So like this. Approximately again. Everything is, you know, nothing is set in stone. And then I'm going to finish it on the bottom. Going towards the very middle. That's moustache number one. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. They don't have to be identical, by the way. They don't even have to be same. Just two moustache one on one side, one on the other is fine. If they're not the same, they're not the same. Not a problem at all. Okay, I'm going to erase my extra lines. All right, we have that. Um, then we're gonna add a beard. So it's just gonna be a zigzaggy line from each side going to into this background. You can flick a couple lines from there in. So pretty much like that. Now we're gonna move on to our hat. And we're just gonna add a wavy line going from here up towards you know, right here. It doesn't matter how wavy it is, so whatever you make it, that's what it's going to be. There's no particular way you have to wave it. Just a wavy line of some kind is great. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. It's also pretty good. And then I'm going to add the end of our head hanging from here and a little pom pom on the end. All right, then after that, we're going to move on to positioning our flowers. So I'm going to have two flowers, one big, one small. I'm going to start with my big flower. I'm going to position the middle of it first. I would say some more here. I'm just going to put a circle and then I'm going to add flower petals. That's my big flower. All right, that's my one flower, and then I'm going to add smaller ones, some more round here. So I'm going to position the middle again, and then I'm going to add flower petals all around. So pretty much like I did the first one, just smaller this time. That's my two flowers. Now I'm going to position the um, branch. So I'm going to position a, a really small line in between and one right here and curve up and make sure it has a thickness so it's not just one line. 
So it's a thick one. And I'm going to bring it right here to behind my hat and then I'm going to bring it out in here. And in here. Great, so I have it. Um, basically, it's going around, right? It's going behind the hat, coming through here, then in front of the hat, then behind the hat. Actually, let's curl it this way. Behind the hat and coming through here. I'm going to erase this. All right, now I'm going to add the leaves. So I'm going to add one leaf on the end here and a couple on the sides. And make sure you have bigger leaves and smaller leaves. You want to have a variety. And also what's important for leaves, they need to have a fluffy middle, so chunky middle, and the pointy tips on each end. Pointy tip here, pointy tip there. And you can position more leaves than I do. You can do less leaves than I do. Totally up to you. You don't have to stick with the same amount of leaves. Great, that is done, and now the only thing that's left is butterfly. So actually, I'm going to make this leaf a little bit smaller so I have a bit more space for my butterfly. All right, so for the butterfly, I usually start by positioning my body first. So I'm going to add a little line right here, and I'm going to do one wing actually let's position it a little bit to the left as well let's move it and touch I'll position it right here so i have a bit more space for my wing before hitting the flower so i'm going to do my top wing and i'm going to do the wing on the other side and try to have them like a mirrored image here is best if you have them exactly the same on each side or at least very similar so butterfly symmetrical and then I'm going to add one bottom wing on one side and a bottom wing on the other side. I'm not going to add details to my butterfly on this stage. I don't really need them. I'm going to add them much much later when I move on to my black paint. So that's pretty much it. That's all we needed for our sketch. Our sketch is done. Now we can move to our painting. So I'm going to put my pencil and eraser aside and I'm going to start with my background. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use green paint and I'm going to use my large brush. So, let's go, well, it's not large, it's the biggest one out of what I have, but really it is medium. So, I'm going to dip it in the water and I'm going to make my green. I'm going to be using two tones of green paint. I'm going to use dark green and light green. So, I'm going to make both of them. I'm going to start by making my dark green. I'm going to scoop some yellow on the side and I'm going to add a decent amount of blue. I would say equal parts of yellow and blue will give you this nice dark green. No adding black, just yellow and blue. That's plenty of paint. And now I'm going to mix uh, my light green. So I'm going to start with yellow again. I'm going to scoop some yellow on the side. This time I'm going to add just a little bit of blue, way less than the first time. So I need more yellow. And I'll definitely add some white to it as well. So those are my two greens. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my brush. I'm actually going to start with my dark green. 
And you guys are welcome to use any brush that you may need for this because you may need a smaller brush. So there are two ways we can do this. Um, so how are we going to work this? Let me explain this on this painting first. We're going to start with the outline. We're going to add a dark green closer to the outline a little bit further and then we're going to start blending. Then we're going to color the rest with their light green and blend them in between. Now it can be tricky because there are a lot of uh, working around areas here. So what I would suggest you do, and you can take it or leave it, is go right over your leaves and everything else, except avoid the flower. It's going to make your life coloring this in much, much easier, and you will likely still see your lines, under your pencil lines underneath um, your paint, so you're still going to be able to paint your leaves later. If you don't, it's not a complex detail, so I wouldn't be worried about you not being able to just freehand it later on top. So that would be my suggestion. If you're afraid that you're not going to see them through your paint, or you're afraid that you're not going to be able to freehand them later, you can totally avoid them or work around them, but it will take you much longer. So just FYI, and you can decide how you want to proceed with that. I'm going to go right over them. So I'm going to start by taking my dark green. And don't take just a little bit, take a good amount of paint on your brush. So you see I added quite a bit here. Now right away without waiting, I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to grab my light green. And the rest of this I'm going to color in in my light green. And only once I color that in, I'm going to start blending them. Do you see I go in between them? And then just smudge that line. Don't worry about the texture there. We're going to cover that up with lighter shades. This is all you need for right now. And then once you have it, you're going to wash off your brush and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'll wash my brush. Now I'm going to start with my dark green again. All right, and again, right away, as soon as I have it, wash off my brush, take light green, fill the rest with a light green, and then blend it.
that looks wonderful. I'm going to fix my edge a little bit. And now I'm going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to add second layer there, but not yet. For right now, it's good. So we'll just leave it alone. We'll wait for it to dry. What I'm going to move on to now is this bottom section, so the beard and the mustache. And what I'm going to start with, I'm going to wash off my medium brush, then I'm going to take some straight white, and I'm going to color in my beard with straight white. I'm going to start with my beard. Try not to bring any green into this. So maybe don't go right to the edge if your green is still super wet there. All right, and now I'm gonna make, actually let's color in the top too, why not, right? Yeah, let's color in both. If you need to, you can use two different brushes. That's what I'm going to do because there's a small spot right here that I cannot get with my large brush, so I kind of have to go with my small brush. All right, that's great. Now I'm going to make a light blue. So I'm going to scoop some white on the side and I'm going to add a little bit of blue. So this is a good color. I may adjust it once I start using it, but let's start with this and see how it goes. And I'm going to flick a couple of those brush strokes from the bottom up right here. And a couple on the bottom of my mustache. So don't use too much paint here. You want to use just a little bit of paint on your brush. If you use a lot, it's going to turn blobby for it to blend and look nice and light. You only have to use a little bit. After that, I'm going to make even darker blue, just a little bit of that. So just a little darker, it doesn't have to be very dark. So it's just a touch darker. And with this one, I'm actually going to use my small brush. So I'm going to wash off my medium brush, put it aside. I'm going to take my tiny brush. And I'm going to continue flicking a couple brush strokes from the bottom up here. a little bit from the sides too. Then I'm going to bring some right in the middle in between the moustache. And then I'm going to highlight, well not highlight, darken actually, but you know, add a little bit of that on this bottom part of the mustache as well. Again, don't use too much paint on your brush. I'm only using a little bit, so it's not very blobby. And ideally, you want to do this right away while your white is still wet. If it dried already, it's not a problem at all. You can still get that lightness. You just may need to use even less paint on your brush in that case, so it dry brushes it off. Alright, then I'm going to let it dry because I will be adding yellow and I will be adding a little bit of purple. 
But if I add it now, my yellow is going to mix with my blue and it's going to turn into green. And I'm trying to avoid having any green here. And with purple, it's just going to be a little bit too blue if it blends with my blue. So I'm going to wait until this dries and then I'm going to add it. But what I can do right now is I can color in the nose. So for the nose, um, I'm going to mix it with, let's mix it with a medium small brush. So this one. And I'm going to start by mixing red and yellow and white. You see it became like orangey, peachy, coral color. And then to that, I'm going to add just a tiny smidge of black, just like a little, little bit. Make it a little bit dimmer. So I'm going to start by coloring closer to the edge with this color first. Avoid your butterfly as much as you can. You can even use a small brush for this if it's easier. And then I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on my paper towel. And I'm going to take straight white, just a little bit of it. And with a straight white, I'm going to go inside, color it in, and then I'm going to start blending it towards the outside into this freshly added, this light brown, warm paint. And you see it creates this color that's lighter on the inside, darker on the outside. All right, we have that too. Wonderful. Moving further, so now we're going to move on to our hat. And I'm going to do hat the same way that I've done my background. I'm going to use two colors, darker color towards the outside, lighter color towards the inside. And again, I'm going to be going right over all my leaves, but I will be avoiding my flowers. So both colors in my case are going to be variations of both. And they're both going to be on a colder side, which meaning they'll have a hint of green so they're gonna have like a teal undertone but just blues are fine too you don't have to make it complicated and use teal just blue will be just as well um, you can use you can continue using your medium brush or you can switch to a medium small brush here I'm gonna switch to a medium small brush here because those sections are gonna be not so big but this one is fine to action let's go with medium doesn't really matter guys honestly You'll know what I'm talking about once you start. Just choose which your brush is comfortable. So let's start by making our dark blue. I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to take some blue. Quite a bit of blue. Mix them up. I'm not trying to make super dark blue, but it has to be on a darker side. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow. So a tiny little smidge of yellow. So it doesn't turn into a green. If you have too much yellow, it's going to turn into green, and we don't want that. We just want a hint of that color. And then I'm going to make my light color. It's the same ingredients, just this time we're going to add more white and less blue. But it is still white and blue and a little bit of yellow. Right, I think that's just the right color. So I'm going to move on to that. And again, I'm going to start with my dark color. So I wash my brush, I dab it off on my paper towel. And now I'm going to take my dark blue. I'm going to go right here. Again, I'm going to avoid my flower. So if you need to, around the flower, I know it can be tricky to use larger brush, so you can simultaneously use two brushes. And grab a small brush and go around your flower with a small brush. But also don't be too you know particular about flower. If you get a little bit of blue on your flower, it's not a big deal. We're gonna add flower later so we can fix anything. Whatever paint goes onto flower, it goes onto flower. It's not a problem. 
totally fine. Okay, and you kind of have to work fast here. You don't want your teal to dry, your dark color to dry before you add light color. So notice, I'm using generous amount of paint. You see how it glares? I'm not dry brushing it on. I'm using good amount of paint. I can't say that I'm using a very thick layer, but I'm definitely not using a thin layer either. And you only go to the beard. You don't go around the beard. You only go to the side, right? You color the side with this, not the bottom. Okay, so this is enough. Now I'm gonna wash off my brush. I'm not gonna do the other side just yet. I'm gonna wash off my brush, grab my light color that I made, and I'm gonna color starting from the middle. Now I'm gonna blend it. All right, so this side is somewhat blended. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect blending. So we're gonna add second layer there. So if there's a bit of texture there, that's fine. And then I'm gonna move back to my dark color. And I'm gonna go on the other side. This time I'm not gonna go that far in with my flower, so I'm still gonna add it a little bit around my flower, but not that far in because that flower goes too far. So I'm gonna add a little bit around here. Right, and now I can move on to my light color. And again, blend it all in. All right, and now I'm gonna go to my top and I'm just gonna use my small brush because this is a pretty small spot, so there's no reason for me to use um, 
large brush or medium brush. So I'm going to start with the dark color again. And that first. And then add a little bit of that light one here in the middle and blend it. And while I'm at it, I want to add a little bit of white. So I'm going to take some white and I'm just going to color in this little guy here. And I'm going to fluff it up a little bit. All right, awesome. So now I'm going to move on to um, coloring in my flowers with first layer of pink. So I'm going to use a couple different colors there, but I'm going to start with just bright and vibrant pink. So I'm going to use my medium small brush for this, so this guy. And I'm going to mix some red with some white, make nice saturated pink. If you have that guy, um, that color pre-mixed, you're welcome to use that too. You don't have to mix it. And then I'm just going to color in both of my flowers with this color fully. Except maybe the middle. You can use any brush. If you find that medium small doesn't work for you, you're welcome to use just small brush for this. I colored my flowers and now I'm going to add a little bit of light pink. So to the same color I just used, this is my dark pink, I'm going to add quite a bit more white to make nice light pink and I'm going to add just a little flick of this color on each flower petal. And you can continue using medium small brush or you can switch to just small brush for this. And it doesn't matter whether this is dry or wet. I'm just going to add like a flick from the outside in on each of my flower petals. And some can have a bit more, some can have a bit less. You don't have to have the same exact amount on every single flower petal. Awesome. We are getting there, guys. We're getting there. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add yellow on my butterfly. I'm literally gonna color the butterfly in with yellow and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow on my beard. So guys, let me quickly fix my camera because it got out of focus and that's not cool. Okay, we're back to focus, good. So I'm gonna use my small brush for both of those. So I'm gonna use, grab my small brush. I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it to make a nice mixture of white and yellow. And first, with this color, I'm gonna color in the butterfly fully. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that onto the beard and a mustache. So I'm gonna add a couple flicks right here on top of the mustache. And a little bit on the side of the beard. All right, after this, I'm gonna move on to my purple. So I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, white again. Actually, a little bit of pink is good too, light pink though. So white and red. I'm gonna add just a tiniest little smidge of blue. And here we go, we're gonna have a light, light purple. And we'll just take just a little bit of that color. And we're gonna dry brush it on from the inside out here. That looks wonderful. All right, now I'm gonna move on to black. So I'm gonna wash off all my brushes and I'm gonna use my small brush and black. So just that. I usually prefer to water down my black a little bit every time when I use it on a small brush because black is a very dominant color. You don't wanna make mistakes with black. It's very visible. It's hard to um, change or cover up or, you know, just in your face. So that's why you have to really be careful with it and it's much easier to work with it when it's liquid. So always, always water it down when you're using small brush, it will give your ability to have finer lines. And now I'm gonna give outline to every single thing here and I'm gonna add my um, branches back in straight black. You can start anywhere you want. I'm gonna start with my Hot. So I'll just add an outline and you, you can make it a little bit thicker in certain areas, thinner in others. It doesn't have to be consistent in thickness all the way through. It actually is more interesting if it's not consistent. It has areas that are thicker, has areas that are thinner. Just makes it a little more interesting visually. See here, I'm doing the flicks. I'm not even doing one straight line. I like the look of it more when it's just flicks.
couple flicks there too, a couple flicks from the middle. Don't need too much paint here. And a couple flicks around here. Just a little bit. Maybe a few from the very bottom here. Right, that's good. I'll add a little bit around the nose. Very good. Um, I want to start adding my branches back. So I'm going to add that line first. And then I'm going to add leaves. And then I'm going to color them in with black. I think that's good. I'll skip that little leaf right there. And a bit of an outline on our flowers as well, but not a full on look. This one is going to be more like flips too. So I'm going to dab in the full middle. That's going to be solid. Both of them. And then I'm going to add just like a, a little flick around each flower petal. And again, try not to use too much paint here. Right, and now let's move on to this section and a butterfly. So I'm going to start with this section here. I'm going to just add a little fluffy outline. And then let's move on to a butterfly. So here you're going to need to try to make your lines as fine as possible. Line it first, and I'm going to color in this section. 
And then I'm going to add a couple of flakes. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side too. And then I'll do a couple of flakes. Color in the bottom, color in the bottom, and a couple of flips. All right. Now I need to let all this black dry before I can move on to adding highlights there or any other colors. But what I could do is I could work, let's move this guy. I can work on my background a little bit. So I'm going to wash this brush and I'm going to grab, let's go with my medium brush. I'm going to grab this light yellow. I still have some. If you don't have some, mix it again. And then I'm going to take some and mix with white to make even lighter version. If you don't have any, you can mix from scratch. It's white, yellow, and blue. Make this light green. And with this light green, dry brush. You're going to be dry brushing it on. You're going to start dry brushing crisscross from this edge towards the middle. But you have to dry brush it so it doesn't go on like blobs. So it's quite nice and transparent. So sometimes if you find that you have too much paint on your brush, you can dab it off on a paper towel and continue just crisscrossing from the edge. You don't have to. This is optional. You could technically leave your background as is. This is what I did when I was originally making this painting. That's why I'm showing you guys. But you could totally just leave it. A little bit of lightness there. And then I'm going to do the same with the white. So I'm going to take the straight white, a little bit of it. And I'm going to do the same thing with just white, but less. So again, starting from the edge. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing on our hat. So I'm going to start with the light blue. Do you remember that light blue that we colored in the middle of the hat? I'm going to take that and add even more white to create even lighter version. If you don't have any, you can make it from scratch. This is just white, blue, and a tiny little smidge of yellow. And we're going to dry brush it on too. So I'm going to empty my brush. I'm going to start dry brushing it on closer to the middle. You can spread it towards the edge just a little bit, but not too far. Don't go right to the edge. And you can use a smaller brush too, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, and then I'm going to add a little bit of white as well. So the same way, just a touch of white. I'm going to dry brush it on as well, so make sure you don't have too much paint in your brush. So again, just empty it on a paper towel and only add it closer towards the middle. So don't go as far with your white towards the edge as you went with your light blue. All right, now that looks pretty good. Now, 
everything else actually needs to dry before we can move on to um, anything. Let's see what else is dry here. You might use nothing, to be honest. I'll have to wait until this dries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pause this video. I'm going to let everything dry. And then I'm going to show you what to do next. And I would suggest you just do this for like a couple of minutes. It dries pretty fast. In my case, it literally is going to take one to two minutes to dry. It doesn't need much. Maybe five tops. And then it's going to be dry. But I don't want you to guys have to stare in an empty screen for a whole five minutes. So I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to let it dry. And as it dries, I'm going to do my edge. Actually, I'm going to paint my edge with black. And guys, I will see you in a minute once everything is dry. All right, guys, my painting is dry, so I'm going to continue. And I'm going to move on to my leaves here. So do you see how leaves have a little bit of green in different shades? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by making a very light green. So again, I'm going to scoop some white on the side and I'm going to use my small brush for this. Then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, mix it up, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of blue. And with this fairly light green, I'm going to add a little bit of it into every single leaf and on every single um, branch as well. And you're not trying to color it all in, you still want to see some black underneath it. All right, that's our first layer of green. Now I'm gonna make dark green, so to the same color. I'm gonna add a bit more yellow and a bit more blue to make a darker green. Not very dark green, but a little bit darker green. And I'm gonna add a little accent with this color. And again, try to not cover all your black. You still want to have some black visible. And then I'm going to make the darkest green by adding more blue to it. So this one should be almost like blue, green-ish blue. And with this color, I'm going to add a little bit more of that on the same areas as well. Our leaves are done. The only thing that's left is white highlight, but we're going to do that later. 
and now I'm going to move to my flowers. So with my flowers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding uh, little yellow highlights. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and you're only going to add very little bit of those. So I'm going to take a little bit of white on the side and I'm going to add some yellow to it and mix it up. And first I'm going to start by adding the dots of yellow in the middle of those flowers. Again, you don't want to cover up all your black though. Make sure some black stays visible. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of that, a couple of flicks. So don't use too much paint here and you don't even have to add it to every single petal. Just use a couple petals. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to move to white. So I'm going to water it down a little bit. So it's easier to work with. And I'm going to start with my flowers as well. And I'm going to add some white on the flower petals. Just do one layer first, and then I'm going to add second layer. You see, a bit closer. And the same on the other one. From the far first. And again, dry brush it on, don't use too much paint. <coughs> And then I'm going to add a couple layers from closer. Do you see I'm not flicking those from the very back? I'm flicking them from much closer. And I'm going to add some white dots onto our middles. Beautiful. Now while I'm on white, I'm going to add white everywhere else where it needs to be. So let's go on to our nose and a butterfly for a second. So I'm going to add a little highlight to a nose. Let's flip here, flip here, maybe a little flip right here. And on a butterfly. So on a butterfly, I'm going to start by adding flicks here, here. Then a design on an actual wing. A couple of flicks from the bottom. Neat. Maybe a little highlights in the body too. We have butterfly is done. Now I'm going to move on to our leaves. So just a little highlight everywhere. Beautiful. And now um, I'm going to add a little dots in white all over the paint and then they will have only one thing left. So first I'm going to add them. So I'm not going to evenly add them all over. I'm going to add them more like, so let's say, so we'll start with flowers. So I'm going to add a couple on and around the flower. 
But you see, I, I kind of add them more in groups. So I don't add one, 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 one. I add a couple, 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 and so on. Couple here. So you see on this flower, I added a couple sections with a few dots. I'm going to do the same on this flower, just a couple sections with a few dots. Then I'm going to add a section here with a couple dots, a section here with a couple dots. Maybe a section here, a little bit right here, right here too, and right here. All right, here are all my dots, and the only thing that I have left now is to add a little bit of teal onto my flower petals. Stay closer look at what this looks like. So let's mix our teal here. I'm going to start with white again. I'll take some white, add some blue, mix them up, make about medium light blue, maybe even light light to medium light and then to this color i'm going to add just a little bit of yellow just a small small little touch with a little bit of this paint we can add flicks onto our flowers so from the outside in on every single flower petal i'm going to add either one flick or two flicks And ta-da, my painting is fully finished. There's nothing else for me personally to add here. Now, if you guys want to add something else, absolutely go for it. You can add a second butterfly here, um, or here you can have maybe more than one butterfly. <clears throat> you can add maybe more flowers. You can add maybe another flower here and another flower here if you want to. You can add absolutely anything that you can think of. You can add dots in different colors. And don't forget to sign it. So whenever you're done and you feel like you got everything that you want to have there, take a small brush and you can put your initials, you can put your signature, you can put your name, anything that you would like. Done. And notice how I did my edges. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to do my edges in black. So I did my edges in black. You see, it looks like you almost frame your painting. This is my favorite look because it makes everything up front even more contrast. It just gives us such a nice finished look. So that's pretty much it, guys. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining me. If this is your first time painting with us and you enjoyed it, feel free to like this video, subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all the upcoming free tutorials here. We have lots more coming. We do them about once a week. So it will notify you if you subscribe to our channel. It will notify you whenever we go live and we already upload a new video. So feel free to do that. If you'd like to share your results, which we always encourage everyone to share the results, please take a photo and post them in a Facebook group. The name of the Facebook group to post the tutorials is in the description of this video. So feel free to post there. We encourage everyone who painted from our tutorials to share their results there. And guys, if you enjoyed it so much and you want to say thank you, you can always do that by tipping me. There is a tip link. Uh, it's a pay PayPal link. It's in the description of this video. No tip is too small or too big. We love all kinds of tips. You don't have to, but it's always appreciated. So feel free to do that. And join me again for the next free video. Bye, everyone.